My shop is renowned for stocking large French farmhouse tables. And when in France, I'm always on the lookout for these wonderful things at which families sat for generations sometimes, leaving the marks of the use, so cut marks as they cut bread and saucisson or spilt things or bumped things. I'm always looking for big tables, but also for the chairs that will go around the table. There's nothing wrong with putting absolutely modern chairs around the table. For sure they'll be ergonomically correct. And you might want something with fabric, something with a tall back. But I think my favourite, particularly for these farmhouse tables, is something like this. Even though the table might be 150 years old, these younger chairs, made any time between the 1930s and 50s, were still made in workshops, were still made by hand. The timbers were felled according, according to the phases of the moon. And they were hand carved, the ladder backs with a little bit of a flourish, with rungs between the legs that actually make the pivot point of the chair, which is normally here distributed amongst the structure. So they're actually very strong chairs, particularly if someone swings and leans back on a chair. The other thing I like about these chairs is that they often have drop-in seats. So if there was to be a, a mishap to the chair and something comes unglued, you simply take the seat off, glue the thing back and put the seat back on. The envelope on the seat is ergonomically correct. Better than the English envelope seats because that is actually lines up with your coccyx and it's very comfortable to sit on, as is the wraparound back. So they are designed for someone to sit at the table for a long period of time. It's interesting to note the type of rushing that the French use on their seats. Rushing was often done by blind people taught in blind institutes because it's a, it's a very tactile uh, art. Uh, you don't really need to be looking at what you do. You, you weave over a frame in a figure of eight, one way or another. But what's interesting to note is that the rush is very, very smooth and has got like a sheen to it. And if you turn it around, you see the difference between the natural rush, as you'd see in an English chair, but you can see that the, the, the maker, as the strand was going over the edge, started to wrap around the sheath of the cane that you make the rush out of. So that's wrapped around, and it, as it plunges back through, it stops having that, and it, as it comes out again, he puts that on. It's an extremely difficult job, but it just means that the rush is not eternal, but it will probably last decades and decades.